in a self-defense case, can a defendant bring out the fact that the victim has a previous history of violent assaults? To find out, you have to read People versus Guerra, but it's 20 pages. Don't have time for that? I've got you covered. This is TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read, Court of Appeals Cases in Five Minutes or Less. This is the episode on the case of People versus Guerra, which can be found at 2023, New York Slip Opinion 01352, published by the Court of Appeals on March 16th of 2023. This is a criminal case. And the issue in this case is when, if ever, can a victim's previous criminal instances or criminal convictions or adjudications be elicited by the defendant to support a justification claim. And I'll get into all that in a second. The law you have to understand to appreciate and understand this case, there's three parts of it. The first is that one of the defenses available to a defendant in a criminal case, especially for assault or murder or attempted murder or anything of violence, one of the defenses available is justification, what we call self-defense. And under Penal Law Section 35.15, it indicates that a person is justified in the use of deadly physical force upon another when he reasonably believes that the other person is about to use or is using deadly physical force upon him. And if you look at that section of the law, although there's a tiny little exception that, that, that it's not worth addressing here, essentially you can't use justification unless you are not the initial aggressor. If you're the initial aggressor, you can't basically can't use the justification defense. So it really matters when you're asserting a justification defense, who was the initial aggressor? Okay. The second thing you have to understand is that in general, the case of People versus Miller established that it precludes admission of a prior violent act on the part of a victim where a claim of justification is, is, is being made, unless the defendant knows about the victim's prior violent acts. So if a victim is a brawler and every Friday night picks a fight with someone for 25 years and then gets in a fight with the defendant, the defendant can't elicit the fact that the victim is a brawler and does that every, every week for 25 years, unless the defendant knows it. That's the rule of People versus Miller. And the third thing you have to understand is there's something called a youthful offender adjudication, which replaces a criminal conviction. And a youthful offender adjudication has four benefits. It relieves the, the person who gets the adjudication from a criminal record. It reduces the eligible sentence. It provides for privacy of the name of the youthful offender while the case is pending, and it keeps it confidential. So it's kind of like, and the whole, the whole point of it is to basically allow a, a person who's a youthful offender, who was a child, essentially, was a minor at the time of the commission of the offense, to have a clean slate. The concept is that we want them to have productive lives. So if they commit an offense that would be a conviction at age 15, that will then affect them the rest of their life when their prefrontal cortex is not even fully developed yet, that will mess them up. So we give them a, a youthful offender adjudication which basically lets them have a normal life without this following them around. Okay, so what happened in this case? What are the facts? The facts are that on March 17th, 2016, which is St. Patrick's Day, which is important, the defendant goes to Van Cortland Park uh, for a St. Patrick's Day parade, and he's drinking. He's 20 years old with no prior criminal contacts or, or criminal history. But he had a black eye because he'd been the victim of an assault a few days earlier. And also at present at that, at that parade is a person named, that I'm going to call DP. His name is in the decision, but I don't think it's appropriate for me to say it. DP is there with some friends at Van Cortland Park. And they exchange some words. One of DP's friends exchanged words with the defendant. They get into a, into a little fight. And then it ultimately ends with the defendant stabbing DP with a penknife in the chest, causing non-fatal injuries. The defendant is charged with assault too, and he defends saying justification. He was going to hit me with a broken bottle or with a bottle. So he was using deadly physical force against me, so I had to use it against him. It turns out that DP had several previous, four previous violent assaults, including that all became YO, adjudications, youthful offender adjudications, including one for a previous St. Patrick's Day. When the defendant tries to introduce that, to show that he was not the initial aggressor, that the victim was the initial aggressor, the judge says no. He allows 
two of them to come in for the purpose of credibility and impeachment, but specifically instructs the jury, you're not allowed to consider it on the question of whether the victim was the initial aggressor. Pursuant to that People versus Miller case, the defendant's ultimately convicted, and he gets sentenced to three years jail. Goes to the appellate division, they say the judge was right. Goes to the Court of Appeals, and the majority, there's a majority in dissent here. The majority says People versus Miller applies, it controls. And People versus Miller says, you can't use it, so you can't use it. And the judge was right. Uncontroversial. But the dissent by Judge Wilson and concurred by Judge Rivera says they acknowledge that People versus Miller controls, but they say we should change that. We're, they, they give three reasons. They say we're out of step with the other jurisdictions. Of the 48 jurisdictions that have addressed this question, 45 of them have done differently than New York. 45 of them have allowed the victim's previous criminal history to apply on the issue of initial aggressor. The second thing is they say, they say excluding a blanket exclusion of relevant evidence thwarts the truth seeking function of a trial. And that's not good. And the third thing they say is that it deprives that what we have here is a constitutional right to present a complete defense on the defendant's side and a statutory right to privacy and this preclusion issue on the youthful offender side, on the, on the side of the victim who's not on trial here. And they say when, when balancing the defendant who's facing incarceration and his constitutional rights versus the victim who's just a witness and a victim here and his statutory rights, the balance, the heavier part here is the constitutional concerns. And for those reasons, they would change or modify or reverse people versus Miller rule and allow this kind of information in. But once again, this, the, the general rule here still holds people versus Miller preclusion of a victim's previous criminal history for the purposes of establishing justification. Too long didn't read people versus Guerra. Have a good day. If you like what you just saw and want to see more just like it, please hit like or subscribe to let me know. <laughs>